Tonight, Agatha's rapid intensification makes it a storm like no other. We will be listing the records and the impacts expected with the hurricane over the coming days. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for May 30th. Well, we have a rapidly developing situation with what is now Hurricane Agatha, previously a tropical storm in last night's bulletin. It is up to a high end category 2 now with 110 mile an hour winds as of the latest advisory from the National Hurricane Center. A landfall expected tomorrow uh, in Mexico in the state of Oaxaca. We're looking at 27 storms so far this worldwide season. In the Atlantic, we're looking at the remnants of Agatha that could potentially spawn something in the Gulf of Mexico or Western Caribbean over the coming days. It's looking at a 30% chance at the moment with two days left until hurricane season officially begins. Probably will be after and ending the streak that we've had of preseason storms. It's day 16 in the Eastern Pacific season and of course Agatha is the primary feature. Could be the easternmost landfall that we've seen at Category 3 plus intensity if the forecast holds, being the previous record currently set by Pauline 1997. Looking at the Western Pacific, we have Invest 93W. Now, this is of course using the official position that the JTWC has. However, we can assure you that that, that is not exactly where 93W is. It is definitely west of there. Uh, I'm not sure why it's even an invest and why it's still being tracked, but it's not looking to delve either way, depending on where you want to mark it at the center. In the North Indian Ocean, you can see that there's nothing going on here. Um, it is a blank slate as nothing is expected to develop in the next five days. We are past the first peak of the season, as I've mentioned uh, in previous bulletins, so of course this is no surprise. Here's the Atlantic satellite imagery, nothing going on in the Atlantic specifically, um, just your uh, usual extratropical lows that we've got going on in the North Atlantic to between the one in northern Canada, uh, one that's been trying to get itself together to the north and east of the Azores. Uh, other than that, just in front of the systems and some um, really not much of anything. In the Eastern Pacific, you can see what's going on with Agatha. It has rapidly developed and strengthened over the last 24 hours. You can see it here a 50 mile an hour increase is what we saw uh, with Agatha jumping from 60 miles an hour up to 110. Uh, since the last bulletin, so um, very crazy uh, storm for what we've seen. It's also going to be the first Category 3 landfall in the month of May in Mexico, so uh, very, very strong storm uh, for May standards for Mexico. But we can see the Western Pacific, uh, 93W is that little mass of cloud that is approaching the Philippines at this point. Um, probably going to be just a shower activity threat and nothing much else really. Maybe some gusty winds, but it's not going to be anything that develops into a tropical cyclone. In the North Indian Ocean, you can see it's practically dead here too. A uh, little disturbance that's going on in the Bay of Bengal, but that's kind of common. We typically see the Arabian Sea completely dries out, and the Bay of Bengal is where you usually see that shower activity. Here's a better close-up of Hurricane Agatha. Um, a little bit of questioning as to whether a rapid strengthening has stopped. Of course, this would be a little bit temporary. Some dry air has been trying to sneak in uh, into the west, so we'll see whether that holds or not. Um, obviously, the less it strengthens, the better at this point, considering how much uh, it has already overperformed. Here is the Eastern Pacific Sea Surface Temperatures. You can see it's pretty warm underneath Agatha, currently 28 to 29 degrees Celsius, with some areas south of it being near 30 degrees Celsius. As you head westwards, the temperatures uh, do indeed decrease. The Gulf of Mexico is around 27 to 28 at this point. The Caribbean is also 27 to 28. And that same can be said for the main development region. As headed into the tropics, it's around 25 to 26. Nothing really different compared to last night's um, bullets. And of course, these sea surface temperatures are more long term in terms of the changes to those. In the North Indian Ocean, you can see it's around 29 to 30 degrees in the Arabian Sea. It's 28 to 29 across the Bay of Bengal. Philippines is looking to be close to 30. South China Sea around 28 to 29. And pretty much the 30s are starting to pop up more in the main section of the Western Pacific. So that'll be uh, worth noting as we head into the next several weeks here. Uh, and into the southern hemisphere, those temperatures are looking rather cool as well uh, compared to what they were a few months ago. Um, 27 to 28 seems to be the most dominant feature, especially across the southwestern Indian Ocean. Um, and then of course the sea surface temperature anomalies at La Nina there is completely in effect at this point. Where Agatha is currently is under above average temperatures, Gulf of Mexico is under above average temperatures, same thing for the Caribbean and the main development region. Uh, Northwest Pacific is looking pretty warm as well, 
same can be said for the Western Pacific in general. As if we haven't talked about Agatha much in this Bowl 10, we are looking at Agatha 2010 for this on this day. It was making landfall in Mexico as well, and pretty much dodged retirement, uh, killing over 200 people and becoming the fourth costliest cyclone in the Eastern Pacific records as of the posting of this update. It's a shock that it wasn't retired, and here we go again with another landfalling Agatha. It's also worth noting that the current record for the strongest May landfall in Mexico is actually Agatha 1971. Uh, so Agatha has a pretty bad reputation for May in the Eastern Pacific. That's pretty much the mess I can say about that one. So looking at the next names in the Atlantic, we're looking out for Alex followed by Bonnie. In the Eastern Pacific, the next two names are Blas followed by Celia. And in the Center Pacific, it may be Memorial Day, but I think we're going to have to have a memorial for our hopes on when Hone will finally form. In the Western Pacific, we're looking out for Chaba, followed by Irie. And in the North Indian Ocean, the next two names here are Citrang, followed by Mandis. Two names we're probably not going to be seeing for a while, given the fact that we're past the first peak of the season. Moving on over into the Southern Hemisphere, we're looking at Darien as the next Australian region name, Let Lama as the next Southwestern Indian Ocean name, and Holly as the next South Pacific name. We'll be back for another Top Weather Bulletin tomorrow night, along with live coverage ahead of Agatha's landfall.